Are you doing sit-ups like there is no tomorrow in order to lose belly fat, strengthen your core and have visible abs? If you are, then you should pause and reconsider your approach to core training. Hello everyone, I hope you're all very well. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be discussing how to train our core optimally. First things first, it's been proven that we can't spot reduce body fat. So no matter how much we train our core, the training itself won't result in direct fat loss from our midsection. To have visible abs, we'll need a low enough body fat percentage, which we can achieve by making adjustments and optimizing our nutrition, training, activity, and overall lifestyle. Now, let's make sure we understand the difference between abs and core. Your abs or, or abdominals are a part of the core musculature. The term core doesn't simply mean abs. Your core muscles are responsible for the maintenance of stability of your spine and your pelvis. They control the position and the motion of your trunk over your pelvis to allow for optimum production and transfer of force. Basically, the primary function of your core muscles is to resist motion, not to create it. And when you think about the majority of exercises we do in the gym, especially the free weight stuff, for example, the squat variations, the deadlift variations, rows and presses. Our core is heavily involved in these to create maximum stability and allow us to perform these exercises optimally. So how can we train the stability function of our core? We have three categories. First, the anti-extension which is basically where we're trying to resist extension. We're trying to avoid arching in the spine. So we don't want to arch during the exercises. And here we have example planks and dead bugs, which we can perform to train the anti-extension function of our core. Next up, we have the anti-rotation. So here we're trying to resist the rotation. Here, basically the goal is to avoid turning at the spine. And here example exercises for this category could be the paloff presses. There's lots of different variations of these and as well as bird dogs. The third category is the anti-lateral flexion. Basically, we are trying to resist sideways bending. In this category, example exercises could be the side plank, as well as the suitcase hold variations. With all these exercises, with all these stability movements, we want to perform the exercises in a controlled way. So the ones that have movement in them, for example, the paloff presses and the bird dogs, we want to perform them really slowly in a controlled way. With all the exercises, the goal is to avoid movement at the spine and to resist the motion. Now that we know the importance of the stability function of our core and how we can train this, I want to add that I don't believe there's anything wrong 
with incorporating some direct ab work for example crunches reverse crunches leg raises especially if you enjoy them just be aware that performing only spine flexion exercises like sit-ups for your core isn't going to be the best way to go about training your core effectively also it's there is some research out there suggesting that performing sit-ups excessively will potentially be harmful for your lower back as they can create excessive compressive forces in the lower spine in the lumbar spine this doesn't mean that if you do sit-ups you are definitely going to pick up an injury it's just something to keep in mind especially if you are someone with a sensitive lower back you definitely want to be aware of this and you might want to pick better exercises for yourself i hope that was a useful video i hope you found that beneficial please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and i'll get back to you if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.